All right, problem 32 off the GRE subject math practice test. Uh, this problem, you're taking the derivative of an integral. Whenever you see derivative of an integral, you're probably thinking fundamental theorem of calculus, and that's exactly what you're doing here. Um, in short, the derivative and the integral kind of cancel each other out, and you're sort of left with this right here. Um, but it's not quite that easy when you have a function in here. Uh, so what's going on, the, the formal statement of the fundamental theorem of calculus that we'll be using says that if you define capital F of X to be the integral of, and uh, what A's, let's do U's, U of X to V of X here. So these are functions of X of F of T DT. Then what that tells you is that F prime of X, in other words, the derivative of this thing, which note is exactly what we're talking about, is, is almost this, but it's sort of this evaluated at these guys, but you're kind of, we took an integral and a derivative and we have to account for the fact that the derivative of a composite function uses the chain rule. Maybe it's easier if I just write it. Uh, we get f of, and then uh, the function I have on the top here is my v's. So f of v of x times v prime of x. And so this is really chain rule what's going on here. I took the derivative of the outside function that turned the capital F into a lowercase f and leave the inside function alone and then multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. Uh, and then I gotta do the same thing with the u's, uh, just like with any other integral, you take the top one and subtract the bottom one. So I got f prime, or no, sorry, f, which is capital F prime of u of x times u prime of x. Uh, so what I wanna figure out is exactly f prime of x here, right? The derivative of this thing right here. So this right here will be my answer. So what is this thing right here? Well, f of t is e to the t squared power. And so I want f of v of x. So I want this thing right here. So e to the, and then instead of t squared power, I want uh, playing the role of t will first be my x to the fourth. So this is f of v of x. And I want to multiply that by v prime of x, which would be 4xp. And from that, I want to subtract kind of the same thing, e to the, and then instead of writing t squared, uh, what I'll write in place of the t will be x cubed. And I want to multiply that by the derivative of x cubed. You get 3x squared right here. Uh, so this right here is my answer. And you're like, well, I don't know. I'm staring pretty hard at your answer, and I don't see that anywhere here. Well, okay, they're gonna force us to do a little bit of simplification. Uh, x to the, you gotta be a little bit careful when you have exponents raised up to exponents in the order that you're doing all this stuff. Uh, this t is getting squared first. It's, it's e raised up to some power, and that power happens to be t squared. I prefer to write these with unnecessary parentheses. I prefer to put that in like that. Um, so the parentheses would go here. You don't need them without the parentheses. This is what it implies. But note that that's different from than e to the t power. That thing's squared. At any rate, um, x to the fourth power squared is x to the fourth times x to the fourth, which is x to the eighth. So I have e raised up to some power. That power is x to the eighth. Uh, note the unnecessary parentheses. And I'll multiply that by 4x cubed. And from that, I want to subtract e raised up to the x to the sixth power, again, with the unnecessary parentheses, times 3x squared. And let's see, it looks like we're doing some factoring here. So I could pull out uh, x squared for sure. Okay, I see some x squareds pulled out there. Um, I wonder if I could pull out e to the x to the sixth power. I could, although now it's a little bit tricky algebraically, but let me show you how you do that. Uh, note that I have two terms here, and each term clearly has an x squared in it, so I'm gonna pull that x squared out first. And then each term also has e raised up to the x to the sixth power. And you're like, no, nah, I mean, I see it here, but I don't see it over here. Well, really what I have here, I need to write this somewhere. Let's go down a little bit. I got e raised up to the x to the eighth power. And I claim that that is the same as, just saying that's the same as, let's do it this way. If I'm gonna factor out 
e to the x to the sixth, which I, which I think I want to do because I'm staring down at the solution and it looks like this one has that factored out. Um, if I factor it out, really what I'm doing is I'm dividing here. Hey, wait a minute, I got uh, a quotient of two exponents. I remember there was a rule for that. If you have the same base, you can leave that base alone and then you just subtract those two exponents. So I'll take this x to the eighth and from that I will subtract x to the sixth. So if I am to factor out e to the x to the sixth here, what I would have left over would be, well, it'll be exactly this. Uh, from the e to the x to the eighth, I'd have this thing left over. And so if I look at this first term, I got the e to the x to the eighth minus x to the sixth. Uh, and then don't forget, I just factored out an x squared, so I still have 4x in this term. Uh, and then in this term, this is all gone and this is gone, so I only have the 3 left behind. Doesn't fit in there very well. Uh, maybe I can try that one more time. Uh, hopefully that looks exactly like this. Let's see, I got x squared, cool. e to the x to the 6, yep, there's don't have the unnecessary parentheses. 4xe, uh, so here's the 4x, here's the e raised up to the x to the 8th minus x to the 6th, then the minus 3. Looks a lot like answer E here, so that would be the answer to this question.